Chief Minister. Um, the Chief Minister updated the European Scrutiny Committee on the state of treaty talks, saying the remaining issues were more political sticking points than technical. Chairman Bill Cash asked what was left to resolve, and although Fabian Picardo was reluctant to give specific details, he did admit that there are issues relating to sovereignty. So what there, what there is left to resolve, as, uh, as you rightly um, you know, stick your finger into my wound and twist, um, it is an issue which uh, it does not immediately relate to sovereignty. Uh, but there are, of course, issues which relate to sovereignty. And what we need to do is we need to strip out those issues to ensure that when we resolve them, we resolve them in a way that does not touch and concern sovereignty. And I'm convinced that we can achieve that. In respect of the implications for the military on the rock, Fabian Picardo said neither defence nor security were his responsibility, but that issues relating to the movement of service personnel across the frontier were being dealt with by the Foreign Office. He dismissed reports in the UK media that talks had stalled over the airport. Uh, the negotiations cannot now continue for this period because of the calling of the Spanish election. And I think we, we all expect our democracy to be respected. And until then, the process of negotiation is therefore to take the, the word used by the journalist stalled in that period. But it is not true to, to say that before Prime Minister Sanchez um, called the general election in Spain the morning after the uh, regional elections on the 29th of uh, May, that the talks had been stalled. The talks were sticky, they were difficult, um, and they were intense, which is exactly what you would expect in this process as it comes towards an end game. Um, so um, I don't recognize the suggestion that the airport has led to the, uh, to the negotiations being stalled. Is it correct that the Spanish are demanding a, regula a regulatory framework for the management of the airport? So I, I found it very difficult, but I have ensured that in the past 21 months I haven't gone into the detail of the negotiations and what the issues in the negotiations are. Uh, for a reason that I'm sure you, you will agree with me makes sense. If I start to put my negotiating position out into the public domain, the other side in the negotiation immediately understands uh, that I can no longer resile from any part of it because the people of Gibraltar will then judge that I've resiled from a position that I put publicly and they will not um, judge me kindly for that. Fabian Bicardo explained the model being considered for immigration control, which is already set out in the New Year's Eve agreement. Namely, that Gibraltar will always clear arrivals first before they pass through Schengen controls. The Chief Minister denied that things hadn't moved much forward since he updated the committee last year and highlighted the difficulties faced by Blue ID card holders as being the result of being outside the EU. Fabian Picardo faced questions on the upcoming Spanish elections, but regardless of the outcome, he said, they will never get a finger on my land. He described the relationship between La Línea and Gibraltar as symbiotic and stressed the hard work being done on all sides to achieve a treaty, although he said work on a non-negotiated outcome continues, albeit behind the scenes for strategic reasons. The chief minister did not rule out a referendum. If an issue of the, in the treaty touches and concerns sovereignty, and it won't, then it has to go to a referendum. If an issue in the treaty does not touch and concern sovereignty, but changes the balance of the way that things are done in Gibraltar, it may be necessary to put it to a referendum. Um, in particular, I am in minded to, to remind you that there is a horizon in the treaty, a four-year horizon in the treaty, um, and that therefore there is a period of time in which a decision can be made about whether or not a referendum needs to be called on the treaty. Finally, the Chief Minister poured cold water on the suggestion that he could one day be Gibraltar's first MP in Westminster, saying once he leaves office, he will always be available to assist the next leader of Gibraltar if needed, but he and politics would no longer be bedfellows.